Hello friends, how are you all? Let us continue international economic policy and this is the eighth video of this particular lesson. In this video also we will continue about WTO. Okay, this is the third video in which we are discussing about the WTO, World Trade Organization. It's a very important uh, international body and it relates to international trade, right? And uh, you know, since India is a major player in the world economy, in the international trade also it is very important for us and a lot of times upsc has asked questions on wto also so that's why we are giving uh, you know so much attention to this particular topic so as in the previous video we talked about the bali uh, ministerial conference so as part of the bali declaration 2013 right which was uh, the declaration of uh, bali ministerial conference Trade facilitation agreement was one of the things in that we have seen that in the previous video here we will see what exactly is the TFA trade facilitation agreement. Okay, so the name itself says trade facilitation agreement meaning it is an agreement which will facilitate the international trade. Okay, facilitate meaning it will simplify it will you know make it easy for international trade to happen in all the countries. So basically you have to simplify the countries have to simplify the complicated and time consuming custom clearance that was the first point mentioned in the tfa that you know all the countries should take measures to simplify the custom clearances to reduce the bureaucratic hindrances okay to reduce the clearance time etc so all those things were uh, that all that uh, that point was mentioned in the agreement that countries will take steps to do this then reforms must be brought by each country in the following areas so first that you know the importers and exporters should be able to apply and pay fees and taxes online okay there should be an online facility it should not be you know offline online meaning you know people can do it from anywhere in the world then there should be a single window clearance so many different clearances are required right so there should be just one place one window where you know a person can apply and all the clearances can happen there he can track his progress there then faster clearances for perishable goods perishable goods meaning goods which can be you know naturally decayed for example food grains or you know vegetables you know things which are perishable so uh, there should be faster clearance for such goods then no middleman and agent should be needed you know, okay it should directly be the importer or export exporter and he should directly be dealing with the government there should not be any middleman because these middlemen they do a lot of harassment they extort a lot of money and you know they should be removed from the system and coordination bodies at national and international level should be established so that you know if there is any issue between two countries you know there can be coordination that can happen so you know these reforms must be brought by each countries now obviously what will be the benefits of trade facilitation agreement it will increase exports right because see if uh, you know there is the the time for custom clearance and bureaucratic hurdles are reduced then obviously international trade will increase exports will increase gdp of the countries will increase because exports uh, uh, is one of the components of gdp jobs will increase for the people because you know now more activity is happening so these are all although these are all the cliched uh, you know kind of benefits but you know i found it worth mentioning here that trade facilitation agreement purported to have these benefits then uh, the deadline for signing of trade facilitation agreement was 31st july 2014 okay see in 2013 this declaration happened in bali and it was said that all the countries should sign the trade facilitation agreement by 31st july 2014 but india our country refused to sign the trade facilitation agreement unless a permanent solution on food subsidy was brought so india was hell-bent india was vehement on the one topic one agenda about the food subsidy okay for the farmers for the poor people okay for our food security so india was vehement on that that we will not sign the trade facilitation agreement unless we come to a permanent solution on food food security and narendra modi ji our honorable prime minister was a newly elected prime minister of that uh, of the country at that time and uh, you know he uh, he very vehemently and uh, you know uh, he he told uh, to the wto that we will not sign this tfa unless you know we have a permanent solution on food subsidy okay in november 2014 uh what happened uh then modi obama deal happened okay so uh, usa wanted india to sign this deal so at that time the president of usa was uh barack obama and our prime minister was narendra modi ji so you know they they signed a deal it was known as modi obama deal and what they said that the peace deal okay the peace clause uh will be extended for infinite period till the solution is reached 
so uh, they said that the peace clause will not just be for four years but it will be extended up to infinite period until and unless the solution is reached on the food subsidy so that was one point that india could achieve then india's food security program will not be challenged in wto so usa and other countries will not go in wto they will not complain about india they will not um, you know there should not be any disputes related to india's food security program nobody will question it until a solution is reached and usa will back india at wto so usa ha will have to support india when it comes to you know food security program so you know this deal was signed and after that india signed the trade facilitation agreement in uh, you know after signing this deal and trade facilitation agreement came into force in january 2017 okay all the countries kind of they signed it took some time to sign this agreement and in finally in january 2017 trade facilitation agreement came into force okay so this was about the you know bali ministerial conference this was one of the important uh, you know agreements in in the bali declaration that's why i want to discuss it now let us study about the general agreement on trade in services gats which is a part of wto okay so as we know previously there was gat G G A T T general agreement on tariffs and trade which was only about the trade in goods but in wto as we know uh see i am repeating this again and again so that you know it will be uh, you know it will be completely absorbed into your mind that's why so i am trying to you know make your revision so gat was only for trade in goods but later on in wto as we know so many other things were also involved so trade in services was also made a part of the agreement and that particular agreement was known as gats general agreement on trade in services in wto there were more than 60 agreements that were signed and gats was one of them so it was a treaty of wto which entered into force in january 1995 okay and what uh, you know what was the main thing that the gats did so the main thing that the gats did was it extended the most favored nation principle to services trade as well now what is this most favored nation principle this most favored nation principle was part of gat originally it was for trade in goods what is the meaning of most favored nation see for example if india is one country and and most favored nation is a status that india gives to other country for example india has given singapore the status of most favored nation mfn okay most favored nation meaning that india will uh, you know make its trade you know comparatively freer for singapore okay it is a most favored nation meaning uh, you know we will we will make trade from these countries easier okay so it is a kind of uh, trade agreement only but it is a status that is conferred upon that country okay it is because of the friendship between two countries or because of the you know geopolitical relations between the two countries so most favored nation status is given to one country by the another country now what was in the original treaty of gat it was said that if a country for example india is extending the most favored nation status to another country say singapore then as part of w, uh, gat agreement india should extend such a status to all the other uh, countries also which are signatory to the gat agreement okay so if india is giving this mfn status to one country that means it is giving it is giving some preferential treatment okay it is a kind of preferential treatment given to one country so india should give preferential treatment to all the members of gat also so that was you know that was a general principle now this the same principle was uh, you know applied it was extended to the trade in services as well so it is said that if india is giving preferential treatment most favored nation uh, you know status to one countries for services trade it will automatically or it should automatically give the same status to all the other member countries also okay so that was the uh, basically uh, the principle of most favored nation and uh, as part of the gats it was also mentioned in the agreement that members will be free to choose which sectors are to be progressively liberalized okay so it is not that you know in one go in 1995 itself all the service sectors all the different kind of service sectors will be liberalized so there are so many sectors in service sector also right there are there is hospitality there is transport there is banking there is commerce there is it etc etc okay so you know so many different sectors are there so countries will be free to uh, you know choose which sectors it wants to liberalize okay it will decide on its own and which modes of supply would apply to a particular sector now we'll study about what is a mode of supply see i'll tell you why mode of supply is important when it comes to services trade whenever there is trade in goods 
okay whenever there is trade in goods what will happen there is there will be one traditional thing that will happen for goods it will always happen that say for example if one country india is importing is exporting goods to usa okay so what will happen india will manufacture goods it will pack it it will ship it to usa and you know if india is importing something same thing will happen in the ships the goods will come that is the only way trade in goods can happen by you know actually physically sending the goods from one country to the other however trade in services can happen in four different kind of modes okay four different kinds of mode we'll see let us learn the four modes of supply this is very very important you need to understand you know how the trade in goods is different from trade in services okay it is very important because services can be sold services can be exported it can be imported even without physically sending anything so that is very important so first we will see how it happens so the mode one that is the first mode is known as the cross border supply what it means it means that services delivered within the territory of the member from the territory of another member so for example i'll give you an example of this for example here here is usa this is the territory it, it is this it is a country usa here here is a country india okay here is a country india so services are delivered within usa from india okay so there is nothing physical movement example of this is basically your business process outsourcing or you know your it support okay your call centers so what is happening people are sitting in india they are attending calls from india they are you know and they are providing services to usa in the territory of another country the consumers are here so here india is exporting the services by sitting in their own country to the consumers in the another country in the usa so that is the first mode of supply this is known as cross border supply because india is supplying service from our country to the another country in their in their physical territory so this is the first mode of supply now let us see what is the second mode of supply the mode two is known as consumption abroad what is the meaning of this services delivered outside the territory of the member in the territory of another member to a service consumer of the member again i'll give you an example for example if a person from italy italy is a country if a person from italy comes to india to see taj mahal okay he comes to he visits india to see taj mahal so he will purchase ticket for taj mahal say the ticket for taj mahal is 100 dollars for the foreigners so he is spending 100 dollars uh, to see taj mahal in india so he is what he is doing he is taking the services of tourism okay he is consuming tourism in india he is a foreigner he is visiting india he is seeing taj mahal he is paying 100 dollars as the ticket so what he is doing he is consuming abroad for it for the italian person he is consuming abroad india is a abroad country for him he is consuming abroad so see service delivered outside the territory of the member so here the service is delivered outside italy it is delivered in india in the territory of another member in the territory of india this is india is another member to a service consumer of the member and it is this service is being delivered to the consumer of italy italian person so this is an example of mode 2 of service i hope you are understanding this now let us look at the third category third category is the mode 3 of service it is known as commercial presence see services delivered within the territory of the member through the commercial presence of the supplier i'll give you an example of this for in in india you must have heard about the agarwal packers and movers right agarwal packer and more what they do is for example if you want to shift your home from bangalore to pune you can hire the services of agarwal packers and movers they will come to your house in bangalore they will they will you know pack all your luggage all your stuff everything they will transport it to your place in pune okay so that is that is the services of pack, packers and movers transport service basically now this agarwal packer and mover now it wants to expand its business in usa also okay in the in the city of seattle or in the city of new york okay nyc so what is happening now agarwal packers and movers has opened its office in usa it has hired the buses and uh, you know the transport the trucks and you know everything in the usa itself it has hired the us drivers only people who are locally available there it is not sending the indian drivers there it is hiring the local people only maybe so they may be americans they may be germans whoever is residing in usa whoever is the resident of usa they are hiring the us residents 
to deliver that services but you know that business belongs to india okay that is an indian company so they are commercially present in another country okay so and there they are delivering the services they are there they are, uh, you know in usa they are doing the same business that they were doing in india so this is a kind of service trade okay so india is exporting service to usa by by being commercially present in that country another example is say for example jio okay so jio is providing uh, you know network services in say south africa so this is again they are commercially present there and they are providing the network services internet services in another country so services delivered within the territory of the member here the services are getting delivered within the territory of usa or south africa through the commercial presence of the supplier so supplier is commercially present in that country so this is the mode 3 of supply okay and now what is the mode 4 of supply the mode 4 supply is presence of a natural person for example see for example if there is a uh, you know barber in india okay there, there is a barber in india now he goes to germany okay and he is providing the haircut services saloon services in germany so that person is indian person he is actually going to germany and he is providing haircut services there and that that is how he is providing the services in another country territory of another country okay so services delivered within the territory of the member within the territory of germany with supplier present as a natural person so the supplier is present as a natural person so see there is a difference here here this barber is not an nri okay he has not permanently moved to germany okay he has not permanently he, he has not permanently gone there that supplier he has just gone there to do uh, you know one haircut or you know maybe 10 haircuts for some time for 10 days 15 days one month maybe because he is very famous in india so you know somebody in germany thought that oh i want to call this barber they have called this barber he has gone there he is delivering the services there and a natural person is present there so basically this is how you know the indian barber is delivering services in the territory of germany by by being present there in germany okay so this is the mode four of services so any service trade it can happen through these four modes okay and uh, as part of the gats as part of the gats the countries can decide first of all which sectors it wants to liberalize slowly slowly and also which modes of uh, you know trades it uh, which modes of service delivery it, it wants to liberalize okay so maybe some countries they will not allow this mode okay we will not allow any natural person to come sir some maybe some countries will not allow uh, you know this mode so it it will say that you know we we will not allow commercial presence of another supplier in our country because it wants to protect the domestic uh, say for example there was another packers and movers in america already so in order to protect that they will say that no we will not allow the indian packers and movers to come here so slowly slowly they can liberalize the countries can decide uh, okay which basically uh, which modes of supply it wants to liberalize now you note here uh, note that in mode 1 and 2 so mode 1 was you know cross border supply for example the it support call centers and mode 2 was consumption abroad that is tourism okay somebody is coming to india and consuming things here okay so in that supplier is not present in the territory of the member okay so whoever is supplying the services for example here the tourism services are were were supplied by some indian company say it wants to visit at taj mahal so some tourism company was providing the tickets and uh, the cross border supply also the it support so they were not physically present in that country okay they were not physically present in america or germany or you know any country where the services where the consumers were actually present or the you know the the residents of that country were actually consuming the services whereas in mode 3 and mode 4 supplier are present in the territory of the member so here we see that they are already commercially present and here the natural persons are present so they are present in the territory of the member so wherever the service is getting consumed so these uh, four modes of supply i hope you have understood it please make notes out of it in order to remember this you have to revise it again and again in order to understand once you understand this you will understand you know how trade in services are happening thank you